Hello guys and welcome to Freebird's Crew and welcome to 75 day hard generative AI learning challenge and this is day 7. And in this video I will tell you about a project that is called Next Word Prediction as I promised. Oh guys, so this Next Word Prediction project is completely based on recurrent neural networks which I already discussed in my day 2 video. You can watch it and I will put the link in the description or in the i button. Okay, so let me just give you a brief introduction about recurrent neural networks. So recurrent neural networks are a type of neural network that is designed for the sequential data only. Okay, so sequential data means who have some kind of a sequence and that sequence is depend on the previous state as well. Okay, so we can say that the output at the each step is influenced not only by the current input but also the previous states of the neural network and this enables the RNN to capture the temporal dependency in the sequential data. So we know that how our current state is dependent on the previous state as well. Okay, but recurrent neural networks face challenges with the long term dependencies where the network struggles to remember information from the earlier time steps. Okay, so it, do it does not capture the long range dependencies. So that's its issue. And why it does not capture the long range dependencies because of the vanishing gradient problem. Okay, so the vanishing gradient problem occurs when we are doing the back propagation. And while doing the back propagation, the gradients of the loss function becomes so small that they do not contribute anything to the network. If I just say that uh, when we are training the recurrent neural network, uh, the process of sequential data by updating the hidden states as each time step. The hidden state at a time t is influenced by the current state, let's say xt, and the previous state that it is t minus 1. And the issue arises when the back propagation happens and when the gradients are calculated and propagated through time to update the model parameters. When the like time lag between those uh, relevant information has become so large and that becomes gradient so small and when becomes gradient so small then it lost the long term dependencies. So that's the issue with the recurrent neural networks. So that issue is solved by the long short term memory networks that are the extension of the recurrent neural networks which can address the vanishing gradient problem by introducing the memory cells and gating mechanisms. Okay, so we use the memory cells and gating mechanisms to address this vanishing gradient problem. And th this is the same LSTM network that can be used in the next word prediction project. Oh guys, okay. Now let me just give you a brief introduction about what is LSTM network. So LSTM has some key components. It is also a recurrent neural network, but there are some extra components added. The first is called memory cell. So LSTM include a memory cell that can store and retrieve information over long period of times. Okay, this cell state can be updated, allowing the model to remember information for an extended duration that can help to uh, remember the long term dependencies. And it has also the component called gates. So it has total three type of gates. The first is called forgot gate. The forward gate allows the LSTM to selectively remember or forward information from the cell state. It, de it decides what information should be discarded and what information should be retained. So that helps in the vanishing gradient problem. Okay. And there is another input gate. So input gate allows the LSTM to update the cell state with new information. It introduces new candidate value for the cell state as well. And then there is called output gate is uh, combined the updated cell state to produce the next hidden state. Okay, so next hidden state is our weights of the uh, words that we are give, giving to the uh, LSTM network. And the output gate ensures that only the relevant information is used to compute the final hidden state. Okay, so if I just give you the complete working of this uh, LSTM network then it could be explained like uh, it first started with the 
input that we give to the LSTM network. Then the forward gate decides what information should from the previous cell should be retained or what should be discarded. And then the input gate update the cell state for new information, introducing the new candidates values for the each cell state. And the cell state updated by the combining the forward gate and the input gate. Okay. And then we see that the output gate, the output gate has a sigmoid function that determines the next hidden state. Okay. So the next hidden state should retain all the information or discard all the information based on the updated cell state. Okay. So this is how this whole LSTM network will work. But this LSTM network only work in a one direction. So if I say we could use it in the uh, bi-directional state. So that is called bi-directional LSTM. It works in the forward direction as well. It works in the backward direction as well. So in that way, it can uh, capture the uh, future long range dependencies as well and also the past long range dependencies as well by keeping your present dependencies in place. Okay, so it is made up of uh, three combinations. The first is called forward LSTM and uh, then is called backward LSTM and then we have a combination that combines the output of the both forward and backward LSTM to provide a more comprehensive representation of the input sequence. So if you see this kind of architecture here, it has two LSTM networks working. Oh uh, guys, okay, so if I say that how this uh, bidirectional LSTM work, so it works in the same way. It first compute the hidden states from the start to end of the sequence as we explained in the uh, simple LSTM network. And then it compute the hidden states from the end to start in the uh, sequence by using the backward LSTM. But the magic just happened at the combination state where the final state at each time step is obtained by concatenating or combining the outputs of the forward and backward LSTMs. Okay, so in that way, we just combine the output of these two LSTMs to get a real world output here. Okay, and then if I just say, uh, what is like a uh, uh, difference between both of them? So both of them are like uh, used to uh, address the vanishing gradient problem that is occurred in the RNN networks by introducing the memory cells and gates. And bidirectional LSTMs extend idea of LSTMs by processing the sequence in the both forward and backward direction that can help to capture the context of the uh, sentence that, that we give from the both of the directions and in a more meaningful way. Okay, so now you guys understand both of the LSTM and the bidirectional LSTM networks. Now, now let's get started with our project. The project is called Next Word Prediction. We build a model with these two kind of networks as well. Oh okay, guys, okay. So guys, here is our project that is called Next Word Prediction. And here we have all the necessary libraries imported. And along with the data that, that we just need, it is a complete corpus text data. And I already uploaded this data on my GitHub profile. So you can easily fetch it by using this code. It has approximately 6 lakh of the corpus length. Okay, so our first step is to do the tokenization that I already do by using the regular expression tokenization that is called rule based tokenization that I already explained in my previous video. And I use it to just only fetch the alphabets because if you see this textual data, it has many kind of special characters along with the spaces and uh, uh, punctuations as well. So I just don't need to do use that. Okay, so I just use the slash w plus that only extract the alphabets from the data. Okay, so if I just fetch it right here, right down. Okay, so you see that these are the words that it fetched from the data. These are only the words, no spell characters, no punctuations, just the words only. Okay, so we have this kind of words in data. And then I used to do to build a dictionary out of it. So I just assign each of the word to its corresponding index. Okay, so th this is how it's done. And then I just build a kind of a window length in which window length we want to uh, predict and we also see that the next word along with the previous words. So I just used to build in this kind of a range in the five word range of the previous word as well and of the next words as well. 
So if you just see this, the previous words are these and the next word to this previous words are off. So in that way, my model will be able to capture the dependencies between these words and this word as said. Okay. Okay. So then I just used to create two NumPy arrays here of those previous word and the next word. So in that way, my model will know that uh, uh, we have the what is my independent variable and what is my target variable as well. Okay. And then I just create this uh, a corresponding position to mid one so that my uh, uh, model will know that at the Y variable, what values are one and at the x variable what values are one for a certain words okay so i just play this one and then we have this lstm model architecture so this uh, uh, lstm model architecture here it just have a sequential model and then we have add a lstm layer with the input shape of the word length that we use we use the five okay and then we have this length of unique words which we use and the length of unique words you can easily get from the above it is the number of words that we get it is the same words okay and then we use the atom optimizer here which i already explained in my previous videos you can check out that and then we use the model compile with the categorical cross entropy because this is a classification problem and then we use the matrix as accuracy and we run our model by using the model dot fit okay and you can like uh, make this model more enhanced or like more good by increasing the approaches. You can, if, if I take the approaches to the uh, 20 or 30, my model performance will increase more. So just to showcase you this project, I make this approaches to 5 only. Okay, then I save my model and load my model to calculate the uh, validation of the accuracy along with the loss. You can see that I only run it for the five approaches so my loss is very much high okay as you can see this as well my loss is very much high in this same case as well okay but this loss cannot stop it to make the prediction so if i just prepare the input in this case i give it a text there's my input as well and for that text i just use this predict compilation with probabilities function and this function will do one thing it takes our input and then generate the uh, next words and next words with their probabilities as well okay so if i just give him this sequence you will never be there in the same situation again and i want it to uh, uh, generate the next word for that if i just give him a sentence until there you will never be and if i give him a sentence in that case you will na never be it will generate the words with their probabilities that what kind of word will occur in the next place. So it will say the entirely word will occur in the next place with 30% of the chances. So okay. So in that way, this whole next word prediction model will work. Okay. So if I just say I have to design a LSTM bidirectional model. So that is the simple case. You just need to change this one layer here. That is a bidirectional LSTM model and along with the dense layer as well which i already above if you see this kind of a model here it also has the same layers thus just the difference occurs in this only one layer so we add a bidirectional layer here and then all of the code is completely same and we train for the same five number of epoches as well and then use the same code to predict the same thing but this time the word can be different so it says the seen word can be occur after this B that with the 24% of the chances, 24% of the probability as well. Oh guys, so in that way, you can see that how you build this uh, LSTM and LSTM bidirectional models and predict the next word with this much ease as well. Okay, so you just need to first prepare your data by tokenizing, building a dictionary and also building the x, y variables, your independent variables and your dependent variables as well. And then you have this whole data ready with you. Always. Okay, okay, so we'll meet in our next video where we'll talk about the word embeddings and I, I will explain about word embeddings with complete math and uh, Python code. So just be with it. And if you want to learn more about prompt engineering, uh, data science, machine learning and uh, generative where you can watch my YouTube videos or read my blogs. 
विल मीट इन अवर नेक्स्ट वीडियो थैंक वाइज थैंक यू सो मच